So, we just covered for prepaid expenses. I just gave you the example of prepaid insurance, where prepaid insurance is a prepaid, everyone, prepaid insurance is a prepaid expense with 100 crediting the asset and 100 debiting the expense. I already explained and gave you an example with the bottled water. This one is now expense. It was already consumed. Nothing. Okay? So the bottled water is an expense. We also have markers. When the marker goes bad and I throw it in the garbage, it becomes expense. Okay? So I just gave you an example of water, bottled water supply or marker supply. Another very common supply in offices is paper. You got 500 sheets, a pack or a stack of paper, and as the paper gets consumed, you, it's called expensive. You will recognize it as expense. So, purchase whatever. $9,720 of supply. I gave you an example with bottles of supply. Recorded expenditures in the asset account supplies. Okay. On December, account of supply was $8,670. So, you used that $1,000 100 and, well, 1,050, 1,050. So, what is the adjustment of the end of the month? The adjustment is simple. Debit supplies expense, debit expense, credit supplies. The expense is a debit account, you debit it, and credit supplies, okay? Okay. And you will then transfer here the originally bought. And after the adjustment, you get 8, 6, 70, just as many as you count. Okay? So after the adjustment, you get this number two. And that's it. It's very easy. There's nothing complicated about it. And other prepaid expenses. Okay. Other prepaid expenses are, and I gave you already example many times, prepaid rent. Okay, we discussed this many times. Exactly accounted as insurance and as supplies. Uh, you too, you just move. Okay, you just move. You, you, no, no. Well, what's going on, guys? You just keep talking. Huh? You just keep talking. I mean, that's not the way it's done. Right? Alright, no more. Okay, next time you're out. Okay? If you talk, okay, if you talk, one of those out. I know I'm the bad guy, right? No, I asked him, uh, yeah. can you help him, can you help him for me? Your wife's gonna have to cross, not now. Okay. Yeah, not now. Now we're doing other things. I'm trying to explain to you stuff. Okay, so. Sometimes you may have prepaid expense, which is not only paid for, but used within the same period. Maybe they buy not in, don't buy enough coffee, okay? And when we use up the coffee in the middle of the month, then the coffee is used. So we're going to have coffee supply, which becomes at the end of the month completely expensed, okay? So the previous one was only partially expensed. This one you can expense it completely. Okay? Same thing. For example, okay, a company may pay monthly rent on the first day of each month. The payment creates a prepaid expense on the first day of the month that fully expires by the end of the month. Yeah, that can happen a lot. In that case, you can just recognize it as an expense right at the beginning of the month. Okay? You can do that up front. Especially if you expect, if you expect to use it by the end of the month, it's okay to expense it at the beginning. That's why I had a student coming to the office and asked me, but should we do it this way or that way? 
And I tried to explain that both are correct. And she said, well, how is it possible both to be correct? I said, well, it's possible. So you can do it as directly as an expense, OK? Or you can do it at the beginning of the month as an asset. And at the end of the month, you can make an adjustment as an expense. The end result is the same, but you can do it two different ways, OK? So sometimes you may have different transactions, and they will be correct, OK? But sometimes when you get the expense, the expense has to be always one number, OK? And last one. In these special cases, we can record the cash paid with a debit to the expense account directly. So we buy a little bit of coffee. We're going to use it by the end of the month. You can say, hey, the coffee is an expense at the end of the month, uh, uh, right at the purchase. Okay. Same thing for the rent. You're paying one month rent. For example, on my motorcycle, I'm paying one month rent. Okay. So for me, I can pay. Uh, I can say, hey, it's immediately an expense. And the other business can say it's an immediate revenue. Now, technically, he will have to say on the first of the month, unearned revenue. And at the end of the month, you have to make an adjustment and make it earned revenue. Okay? But he can make an exception, especially if it's a month to month, and if it's within the month, you can make that exception. It's okay. All right. And we get to a very important concept. You will need it. You will need it a lot in any business that you do. And you will need it in your finance course. In anything, you need depreciation. And depreciation is actually two different things. That's why it's confusing. Depreciation, the main the economic meaning is the loss of value of an asset because of its, it's called wear and tear, because of its, we we'll say, normal use. You normally use a motorcycle, it has depreciation of a value. It loses, it just uses it all the time, it just, again, uh, I mean, this is a pen, but I use it as I write, it loses value, okay? Maybe after one week, I gotta throw it away. Same thing with a laptop. I'm using a laptop, but the laptop's not going to last forever. I'm just going to use it maybe four years, okay? So every month it's losing a little bit of value because it gets old. We say depreciated, okay? Depreciated means it gets old, okay? And used up. Same applies for a taxi, is the car, the car which you ride for a taxi, or a motorcycle. Rental. Oh yeah, the same applies for an airplane. I mean, you don't use airplanes forever. You just use them for 10 years. And every year you'll say, depreciate it, okay? Same thing for a table. You don't always use a table for like 100 years, okay? You use it for five or 10 years, you throw away a new one. Okay? So, in accounting, depreciation is the process of allocating. You allocate the cost of the plant asset. Well, it's just any, any asset. We say long-term asset over its useful life. So let's explain this plant asset the same as long-term asset. In accounting, the typical period is one year. And we consider long-term asset any asset which will be used more than one year. If it's more than one year, it's a long-term asset. The example will be the projector, probably will use it five, maybe ten years. The table, probably use it five or ten or twenty years. The monitor, five years. The computer, maybe five years. This chair, maybe ten years. This particular piece, it could be used probably ten years. Uh, those Boards, the white board over there is the glass, could be used for 20 years. Oh, yeah, well, what about the air conditioning? One year? <laughs> no, probably we use it 10, 10 years, okay? So, when I say five years, 10 years, three years, this is called the useful life. 
Air conditioning usually have five, ten, fifteen years to be useful. They may, may refill it with the inside, it's called refrigerant, every two years. But it's going to last maybe ten, maybe fifteen years. So you estimate, you decide what's the useful life, let's say for the, this one, ten years, for the air conditioning, ten years. And for this monitor, let's say five years, okay? And then you depreciate, okay? And depreciate means you allocate the cost of the purchase, okay? So, you, if you buy this for, I'm, I don't have a good number, for 100,000, okay? And you have a useful life of 10 years, you will say the first year you expense and you call it depreciation expense, ten thousand. Second year depreciation expense, ten thousand. Third year depreciation expense, ten thousand. Again, picking a number for this HP monitor. If this HP monitor costs five thousand baht, okay, and we say useful life of five years. At the end of the first, you say depreciation one thousand. Next year, depreciation 1,000. Next year, depreciation 1,000. So, at the first year when you buy it, it's going to have a full value of 5,000. Then the second year is going to have a value of 4,000, 3,000, 2,000, 1,000. And at the end of five years, meaning at the end of the useful life, it's going to have a value of zero. Okay? So, you have a straight line depreciation. Straight line, this is the most common one. You're going to need it. It's the simplest and the easiest is exactly what I gave you. It is when depreciation where every year you depreciate the same amount. So if it's 100,000, first year, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000, 10,000. 10, so, when you depreciate exactly the same amount, same year. For the monitor, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. So if you depreciate the same amount, it's called straight line depreciation. You have, it's called the purchase price, and that represents the asset cost, okay? That's called the purchase price. At the end of the useful life, you have a value. At the end of the useful life, it's not always worth zero. It's sometimes worth maybe 5,000, okay? You can sell it for the metal inside, okay? So, salvage value is the value you can get at the end of the useful life when you're not going to use it anymore. Example, rental motorcycle. You use it for five years, you keep generating rent, and at the end of five years, motorcycle is broken. You're not going to use it, you're not going to repair it, okay? You're not going to have it anymore as rent. But it doesn't mean its value is zero, okay? Maybe you have a tire, you can sell the tire only and get a little bit of money, okay? Maybe you can sell it for a scrap metal and get a little bit of money for it, okay? Maybe you can get the brakes, okay, or the brake pads on the front and get a little bit of money. So, after you stop using it, doesn't mean the value is pure zero. It's probably going to have a little bit of value, maybe a thousand, maybe two thousand. But you can just say it for the metal inside, okay, or some other part, maybe the tire, or maybe the brake, or maybe the engine still works, okay? Maybe something else works, and they're gonna sell it. So that's called salvage value. Now, in these examples that I gave you, I use salvage value of zero. It's nice, it's clean, it's easy. We just use salvage value of zero, where at the purchase, the asset cost is 100,000, salvage value is zero, useful life is 10, so total value is 100,000, you divide by 10 years, and you get 10,000 per year. Here, you got 5,000 is the monitor for five years of useful life. You get 1,000 of, it's going to become 
depreciation expense. And this is what is the straight line depreciation expense. This is what we call the annual depreciation expense. If it's if you divide it by 10 years, okay, you can divide it by 120 months and you can have a monthly depreciation. Okay. Wow. Okay, so a few more concepts which we have. As you are depreciating, somehow these slides are not good. They're not good enough. They're not detailed enough. So let's continue. When you have 5,000 is the asset cost or the purchase price. After you depreciate at the end of the first year 1,000, uh, the value becomes 4,000. This value we call book value. Book value is the value of the asset cost minus the total depreciation. Total depreciation is called accumulated depreciation. You need a textbook here and we need to see where is the page here because that's important uh, stuff. Links to financial statement. I'm trying to get this depreciation stuff. Where is depreciation? Accumulated depreciation, that's on page 101. And every month you add the depreciation there. Okay? So that account is called contra account. Contra account, that's on page 101. It's unfortunately not in the textbook, but you need it. 101. The contra account is here. Okay? Contra account is here. So, contra account is an account which goes together and always goes together with another account and has the opposite balance. So, a machine will have a debit balance and the depreciation, accumulated depreciation is a contra account will always have a credit balance. Okay? So the book value will be the initial, we call it purchase price or asset cost, the initial cost, minus the depreciation, the, sorry, the accumulated, the accumulated depreciation. So the accumulated depreciation is the asset. And you have a depreciation expense which goes every year and adds up. Let's see what else we have here. Depreciation straight line. Okay, that's pretty much it. Book value. Sometimes, instead of book value, they say carrying value. And sometimes they say net amount. Okay? So, for example, if this is now three years old, and we say 100,000 is the purchase price and 10,000 is the annual depreciation expense, now the book value will be, after three years, 70,000. Okay? 70,000. You still say equipment 100,000, accumulated depreciation 30,000, and the book value is 100 mil minus 30 is 70. Alright, unearned revenues, accrued expenses, I see this one. Accrued revenues we discussed, uh, links to financial statement. That's on page 107. And it's very simple. Every adjustment links a balance sheet account to an income statement account. Okay? So it's going to be an asset usually with an expense and a revenue, sorry, a liability with a revenue. And let's see if we have anything else. If not, I think that's. Aha! Uh -huh. One last piece. The last piece is called adjusted trial balance. So remember, we have a trial balance which gives you all the assets and all the liabilities, all expenses, all revenues and all equity accounts. In other words, the complete list of all accounts and their debit and credit balances which must add up. Well, now you're going to have instead of trial balance, it's called adjusted trial balance. You get the original trial balance, 
in between you put adjustments and then you get the adjust the trial balance and this is all coming in the examples probably now okay all right that's it camera finished